Hello everyone, my name is Jenna Brand. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to go through everything that I bought as a complete beginner archer, not knowing anything, never even having shot a bow before buying what I bought. Um, before I begin, I have to give a big shout out to Kramer Amons. I did a lot of YouTube research, but at the end of the day, I end up liking his channel the most. If you don't already follow and you're an archer and you want to know a little bit more, maybe, um, I would think about subscribing to him. Um, something I find really interesting is like his building of bows and the challenges he does. I think he's just a great entertainer as well. But I did get um, the recommendations for the bow and arrows that I have from his channel. And I can't tell you how happy I am. I am going to link everything down below in the video. And I will also have some pictures off to the side since, um, you know, maybe in this video they can't be seen very well. I hope that everything can be seen okay with a black background. But we are going to begin with my bow. I knew immediately I wanted a recurve bow. In this area, I knew I could find a compound bow a lot easier um, in stores. Uh, I live in Texas. A lot of people who do archery are bow hunters and they find they like compound bows. Apparently they're very popular. I wasn't interested in that. I did want to go the traditional route. And so for me, it was between long bows and recurve bows. And after doing some research, um, my consensus was that they are different, of course, but they have a lot of similarities and it's kind of down to preference for the most part. I did hear some people say that it would be better to get a long bow as a beginner, but knowing that I had a tight budget and that I might want to move on to what I'd really like sooner rather than later, I figured I might as well just get what I want, which is the recurve bow. So the Black Hunter takedown recurve bow. This one is 60 inches and with a weight of 25 pounds, I decided to go um, light at first because I really have no archery muscles and I, after doing the research, I realized it's better to go with a lighter weight so that you can get your form down correctly and without hurting yourself or um, without a adopting some bad habits. So this is what I went with um, as a beginner. I don't really have anything to compare it to. This is the only bow I've really shot, but I will say I'm very happy with it. Uh, we took it to our local gun and archery shop for them to string it because we didn't buy anything to string it with. Um, we were kind of going bare bones on our first buy to save money. Um, we're usually on a pretty tight budget, especially now that the economy is the way it is. Um, but Taking it to the shop, they actually said that it's a really great bow. After my husband told them the price, they were even more surprised and kind of in awe of it. And just me personally, um, I may not always know a lot about things <laughs> and, and uh, stats and stuff like that, but the feel of it is really lovely. Um, the weight is perfect for me being so new and just working on my form. And just shooting in the backyard. I don't have to worry about distance or anything like that. Um, and the grip feels really great. I am five foot tall. I have small hands and it feels really nice for me. It might not feel nice maybe for somebody with bigger hands, but I'm really, really happy with it. And I'm so glad I listened to his recommendation and went ahead and got this bow. Um, the next thing I'll talk about is my arrows. And this was another thing where I'm glad I watched a Kramer Raymond's video. <laughs> it's not sponsored, I swear. Although if we wanna do a collab one day, that'd be kinda of fun. So there were a few reviews on his channel um, for arrows. My husband used to do archery, but he shot with a compound, but he understands the importance of a good arrow. And so we got these Link Boy archery um, with a spine of 400. And they were recommended by Kramer Amons as like the best budget arrow. There was something that was even cheaper and I thought about going that route, but my husband was saying, I don't want you to end up hating archery because you got the wrong arrows. Um, and so far I've been really happy with them. My husband's kind of played a little bit with them. He's actually a little too tall for my bow. He's 6'3", and he's nervous about pulling it back too far. 
and breaking it, which I appreciate the consideration because <laughs> I don't know how much that can handle anyway. And he's very tall. So, um, but just with him playing with it, he's like, these are nice. And he's seen me shoot. And um, again, not really knowing anything about archery. Really happy with these. They feel great. Um, I do want to get um, a 500 spine next and see how they feel different. And I also wanted to go up one more to 600. So I wanted to get, I got 12 of these and I want to get six more of the 500 and six more of the 600 and see how I feel about that and see if I can feel a big difference, if it makes a difference. I've tried to um, shoot these a little bit farther away just for funsies. I probably shouldn't because I'm not very experienced yet, but um, they work pretty well, but I do wonder how a heavier arrow will perform. I'm going to take these out for a second. So I want to just talk about the quiver. I'm pretty sure this is a child size quiver. It's so small and uh, on more than one occasion, I've kind of like just balanced this just wrong, going outside, just hauling it out on my shoulder just to get it out. And it's kind of slipped and the arrows have fallen out and it's been kind of a pain. But I literally found one of, the, I think the cheapest quiver I could. I don't know how you pronounce the name. I'll show you the picture right here. But I mean, it does the trick. I can't really complain too much because what's it supposed to do, hold arrows? It holds the arrows fine. I just kind of think I would like something wider and taller. Um, and then also I think what I will do next time is I'll probably do leather because I don't really love the fabric and maybe it's just because it is a very cheap quiver. <laughs> Again, I kind of feel like it's a child size or something like a kid could definitely use it. Um, I only did a couple things to this. It comes with, hold on. It comes already with a little clip, which you can, I guess, clip to your pants or whatever you have a belt, maybe. I use it just to put my leather tab on, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but I actually ended up clipping these little clips. I put it on because I really like this clipped to my belt or my uh, belt holder, whatever. <laughs> A lot easier. I like it a lot better than just this. I feel like um, that with this, the tension is like a paper clip, and so you have to slide it on. And I do kind of worry about it, like maybe ripping my fabric over time. I don't think I'm doing anything necessarily completely right. I'm just saying what I've observed as a complete beginner and what I like. Um, so I clip this to my pants. I usually just keep my leather tab clipped onto that, and it, with the arrows inside, it keeps everything pretty neatly together. So it does the trick. I would like to invest in a nicer quiver down the road, and I don't know if I want leather just for funsies, quite frankly, because I love the aesthetic of it, if I'm being honest. Um, but I'll definitely do a lot more research because I've been watching a lot of Target archers, and I think that's the route I want to go for archery right now. Um, down the road, I think it'd be fun to play with a different kind of bow and do horseback because I ride horses, and I think that would just be fun. But I think that's down the road a ways. I want to just work on targets and play around with that. Comes with a little Velcro patch. Um, I put one on here that my husband bought for me a long time ago that says I'm not small, I'm fun sized because um, it has a little Velcro bit right here. Kind of fun. Um, I have no real complaints other than I think I just would um, save and spend my money better next time. Knowing what I know now, the leather tab is by Hide and Drink. And I've already cut mine down to the size I like. It's just a little slip through tab on my middle finger. I tied it off. It was, again, a pretty cheap tab. I don't think that I saw anything that was really absurdly expensive. Then again, I was kind of going cheap. I put my money into the bow and the arrows and they're really great, I think, for the price. I'm really, really happy with them. But I just picked a tab that has a little one finger over, two finger under, little gapping there. I really like shooting that way, I found. I did watch a lot of archers and realizing they shoot with three fingers below um, the knock, but I don't like that. <laughs> it just doesn't feel very natural to me. I kind of played with it one time and I was like, no, I'm just going to stick with what I know, but they shoot this more this way and I, I found it to be really fun. I like it a lot too and I feel like um, the string is better balanced to my finger if I go that way. So 
that's how I prefer to shoot, and that's my job. Now what you won't see here is an arm guard. <laughs> Um, when I was buying everything, my husband was saying, just save your money. You don't need it. Just learn to shoot properly. <laughs> um, I have learned that even though my stance has gotten a lot better, I still nick myself every now and then, but it's nothing really, and it's gone in a few minutes. But when I was first learning, insert picture here of the massive bruise I gave myself after continuing to try and try and try to not do something stupid. <laughs> Um, by just absolutely smacking the heck out of my arm. Um, it is something that I will be investing in later as I'm hoping to continue my journey and take classes down the road and just get better. Um, I think that it is, it's nice, even if it's just maybe a little small one, just to help the strength slide off if it does happen to, um, graze me. But I will be buying a good arm guard. Um, I'm going to do a lot of research on that and see what I would like because I do see a lot of ones that are quite thick. It gets really hot in here in Texas. I feel like I might want to go um, a more minimalist route, but I'll be doing a lot more research on that. And something I need to mention really quick is, of course, I need something to shoot at. So I needed to target. Luckily, I did have a friend that dabbled in archery a few years back and isn't really doing it anymore. She gave me um, the foam target you see in my videos. I'll send a little excerpt here so you can see what I'm talking about but it's just a foam target plastic wrapped very simple I think next time I invest I'll probably get one of those kind of like bean bag <laughs> targets um there's a lot of options out there and I think there's a lot of affordable options you I also have my two um, hay bales you see out there they were like $16 each at the time uh, I could have probably found something cheaper because they are coastal hay not straw but they have come in handy <laughs> since I have missed a few times and gone too low and it's also been nice to raise up my target on a platform. So really glad I bought those. Um, yeah, I don't know what kind of targets I'll buy in the future, but there's a lot of options. I think if I started getting really good, I would want to get one that kind of hangs from a tree. I think that'd be fun because I've seen those too. And uh, I, have, I have no shortage of trees in my backyard. So uh, that's something I'm probably gonna do. Um, down the road, as I get better, I will want to invest in better arrows and see the difference in that because there's so many out there. And um, after checking my husband, he was saying how these are relatively very affordable um, for good arrows and they've been so fun to play with. But I am excited to try different brands and see what I like and see what a difference it makes. Way down the road, I'll be upgrading my bow, but I think that this will get me through for quite some time. Um, I'll probably go up and wait, I imagine, <laughs> down the road and go with something more modern. I've been watching a lot of target archery, like I've said. I love watching the bare bow competitions, and so I think I'm going to kind of lean that route, but we'll see. I also am just interested in just trying new things down the road, um, so I think I just want to play and just have fun. But as far as my first setup, I think I spent just under $200 for everything. I think if I got an arm guard, it would have put me pretty much right at 200 or just a smidge over. Um, they're not very expensive, but it was something where, again, we were on a tight budget. And my husband really wanted me to stick under that $200 mark. So that's what we're, we did. That's what I have to work with. And I'm so excited to keep y'all updated and see how I progress and what I'll do differently in the future. I hope that this has maybe helped somebody who's been looking for it. I think that I'm... Uh, my, I'm just sharing my experience as a complete beginner. I didn't shoot a bow and arrow until I, until mine came in. <laughs> my arrows took forever to come in and then we had to string my bow and I think it was about mid-February when I finally got to take my first shot. But it's on my YouTube video here if you want to see what a mess I was. Uh, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.